Greetings, lovely tubadors. Back so soon after my last upload. Well, I suppose that is exactly what happens when you've got a week off work. So, during my lurkings uh, around the dirty back streets of, uh, of YouTube, I come across all sorts of things. You know, those of us who do this tend to lurk in those sort of strange and dark places. Um, we come across all sorts of, you know, these little tosh nuggets from the sublime to the ridiculous. And most of them get skipped over, you know, relatively quickly. But every now and again, I come across a topic that I wasn't expecting to see. Um, often even one that I had, you know, no idea that I was even going to find. Um, certainly it's not something I was looking for. And this is one of those times. Now, the reason I decided to click on the video was because of the heading. That is what initially got my attention because it said something about missing time. Now, I've read a lot about time um, from academic papers and you know, relativity concepts to people who uh, claim to have experienced missing time. You know, the story is, is usually something to do with, the, you know, an, an alleged alien abduction or something. Now, I've experienced a fair bit of missing time myself over the years, but it's uh, not so much sort of due uh, to this, but uh, more due to this. <laughs> I think you know where I'm coming from. Now, enough said on that, but now I, I reckon that I probably know about 90% of the faces um, who commentate on the wacky world of UFOs and alien abductions and supposed, you know, alien crash retrievals. But I came across these two people and I had never seen either of them before. So that's another thing that got my attention. Now, this channel that we're talking about, it appears to be a regular content channel called Leak Project. Um, different hosts come on to do different shows. But the dude behind the mic on this occasion has the sort of ludicrous man name of Rex Bear. Sounds very, very exciting. Um, now, think think Joe Rogan on LSD. That's the best way to, to sort of think about this, this Rex Bear fella. Now, his guest on the show, um, the one that I watched, is one R. Wayne Steiger. Now, another name that I'd never come across before, but this, uh, this R. Wayne Steiger refers to himself in various online profiles as... Um, either an entrepreneur, technologist, futurist, um, free thinker, which is usually um, a way people have of trying to justify some pretty mental uh, ideas about reality. Um, he's also an expert in online payment technology. I'll bet he is. Anyway, I thought I'd have a crack at this video and it soon became apparent that if I was going to make uh, a commentary on it, I would have to do it in two parts. Because not only does Mr. Steiger have information on missing time, he also has some pretty outlandish and completely uninformed ideas about astronomy. Some laughable ideas, to be honest. And in particular, ideas about our own little collection of planets. And here's the thing. Uranus is now on its side. Uh, it's official. Neptune is no longer in, in its orbit. Jupiter has changed frequencies. So uh, Venus, Venus is slowing down. Jesus H Christ, the solar system is coming apart. Why haven't we been told about this? <gasps> Won't somebody think of the children? Actually, it's true about Venus rotation. It is slowing and by quite some significant measure. Um, one day on Venus is about six and a half minutes longer today than it was 16 years ago when the Magellan mission timed it. Now, admittedly, a day on Venus is about 243 days here on Earth, but on a planetary scale, that's some seriously significant application of the brakes. Um, why is it acting like this? Nobody knows. It's and what about Jupiter changing its frequency? Seeker Jupiter, Seeker Jupiter, 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 are you there? Jupiter, you change frequency. Jupiter, copy, copy. Security X, Security X, calling Jupiter. Jupiter. 
Actually, that's no surprise for a massive and hugely dynamic gas giant like uh, like old Jove. And and what was that he said about Neptune? Uh, it's official. Neptune is no longer in, in its orbit. Mm -hmm. Hello, NASA. Yeah, it's Thor. Yeah. Yes, thank you, thank you, dear. Yeah, I did get the check. Uh, now listen, I was just I was just wondering about um about old Neptune up there. Um I heard that it had sort of hauled anchor and sailed away. Um I was wondering if you could take a look through those binoculars um you got from Hangar 18. Still there? Okay. Yep, thanks. Okay, yeah. Love you too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Stand down, planet seekers, it appears to still be there. So keep calm and carry on. Well, some serious revelations there. And what does Rex Bear think on all this, I wonder? So first of all, you said uh, I've got several questions. So let me go back to the first one, because this is, um, this is a lot of information that I haven't heard before. You said that Uranus was on its side. Where did you get that information? These are the latest pictures that we have from our solar system. Um, by the way, the great mystery we... The latest pictures of our solar system. I refuse to believe that he doesn't know the difference between real pictures and some CGI graphics. But let's, let's catch up with how uh, our old friend Uranus is doing. There's Uranus. You see it? It's turned on its side, folks. There you go. Uh, this is what's happened. We've watched this now taking place. And if you load it, notice in the 2005 picture, we're seeing these mega storms. Its equators have flipped. Its equators? It's got more than one. Hmm. And the whole planet's on its side. Well, yeah, it is. And has been for several billion years. This ladies and gentlemen, is not news. Now, how do we know this? How do we know it's actually been tipped over, uh, I think, 93 degrees for so long? Well, it's because it's many, many moons that orbit um, around its equator, which from our respect, perspective is sort of north-south. And the latest thinking on this is that Uranus suffered uh, a few mega impacts during its early years. So if it was anything recent, the moons today would be orbiting around its poles, but they aren't. So the planet must have taken a slap before the moons formed, or at least they would have had time to reform since that impact. So it must have happened several billion years ago. But what about our sweet little sister planet, Venus? Any more info on her? This is NASA, ESA. Um, okay. Yeah. So multiple space agencies are saying that Venus is acting weird. And, and I'm just interrupting here for a second because it makes me think of all the research I've been doing with Venus lately. And the um, several thousand years ago information where Velikovsky presents, it was actually Venus that caused major cataclysms in the past. Venus could have been the planet X that many people refer to that was about 3,600 years ago. Venus could have been the planet X that many people refer to that was about 3,600 years ago that was ejected from Jupiter. And there are actually religious beliefs and the Mayans, as well as the Jubilee being every 49 years. They, um, some experts believe that that's really close to the 52 year cycle of what Venus when thousands of years ago, when Venus was ejected from Jupiter, acted like a comet, caused major chaos on this planet, hence the name Lucifer, the fallen star in astrotheological aspects. So I'm wondering, here's where I'm going with this, I'm wondering if Venus is getting ready to do something crazy again and start, wow, this is deep. Please continue. This is very deep. Uh, I think it might be polite to refer to Mr. Bear's outpouring as speculative at best, but I'm not polite, so I'll just say that he's talking absolute <laughs> Jupiter did not fart out Venus, and Venus is not Planet X, or Nibiru, or whatever made up suit, there was pseudoscientific nonsense fantasy name the basement dwelling daft kids are calling it this week. Please continue, this is very deep. Uh, the other thing about Venus, thank you, uh, is that 
it does not have a magnetic um, dipole like Earth does, like all the rest of the planets. This magnetic signature is that more akin to a comet than it is to a planet. Quite correct. Venus doesn't have a magnetic field. Well, it does, but it's about 100,000 times weaker than ours. Now, current thinking is that this is because um, of its incredibly slow rotation. Um, say it takes about 243 Earth days to rotate once on its axis. So any internal metallic mass doesn't rotate quickly enough to generate a magnetosphere, although it does have a small induction field. Um, this is caused by the sun's direct interaction with the upper part of the Venusian atmosphere. Now, this is all very interesting, but nothing that should cause anyone to think that this is a great revelation. This has been known by astronomers for quite some considerable time. But we are missing some of our favorite personalities here. What about Earth's little cousin, Mars? So here's Mars. Now we're finding out that Mars has water. We're finding out that the great scar, the chasm on it, is, is now that they're admitting to, it looks like it's a plasma event. Um, just yesterday, I was watching a program. They have confirmed that there, were, there have been at least two sites on Mars that have now been confirmed as nuclear explosions. Whoa, 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 whoa. Say that again? nuclear explosions it's nuclear right nuclear explosions nuclear 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 it's pronounced nuclear well however you want to pronounce it and it's pronounced nuclear don't go thinking that this is some evidence of a large-scale nuclear war that devastated the martians millions of years ago if there was a nuclear event, then it would have been a rare but completely natural occurrence. Um, it happened here on Earth about one and a half billion years ago, thereabouts. Um, there's a place in Gabon in Central Africa known as Oklo. And Oklo, for many years, was mined by the French for uranium. But at Oklo, there was an enormous amount of uranium-235, but also 238 existed naturally in the locations where they were mining. Now, it would have been in just the right proportion, you know, one and a half billion years ago, that when groundwater was introduced, it acted as a natural neutron moderator and poof, nuclear fission, a completely natural process. Now, Mars today we know is rich in radioactive uranium, uh, thorium and potassium. So it could very likely have happened there too. The, the strangest thing about Jupiter is that it's collecting moons at the rate of about nine a month. So Jupiter is going through tremendous changes through it. Here, here is one of the recent pictures. As you can see, um, this is not the same Jupiter that we knew. Jesus, that is some dumb nonsense right there. Jupiter is the same Jupiter today that was up there a billion years ago, and it will be up there for quite some time to come, I would imagine. Um, as for collecting moons, um, I have no idea where, where we got the nine a month thing from. Um, we have recently discovered a further 12 moons orbiting the planet, which takes the total to 79, um, and I've no doubt that we'll find more, but nine a month appears to be something that Mr. Steiger has pulled quite literally out of nowhere. So there you have it, folks, a veritable smorgasbord of absolute nonsense spewed out by someone who professes to be some kind of authority, but has obviously never read an astronomy textbook or probably ever even looked down the eyepiece of a telescope in his entire life. Uh, now, does Rex Bear believe a word he's saying? Uh, or is he just going along with it because he knows the sort of mindless moronic fruit bats that Phyllis subscriber index will absolutely lap this crap up. I will let you decide on that one. So that just about wraps up part one of this analysis of some very seriously misguided tosh and frankly, disgraceful displays of ignorance. 
Um, if you've made it this far, thank you very much. Um, if you are already subscribed, a special thank you to you for it's you, you people who grow channels like this. Um, if you're not already subscribed and would like to attend the grand unveiling of part two of this video, please give that little, you know, subscribe button a tickle and very gently prod the notification bell so YouTube can send you a message when I've uploaded it. I have no idea when that will be, probably within the next couple of days. I'm not back in work till Tuesday, so happiness all round. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending another one of my rants. Be nice to each other, look after each other. Look after yourselves, be happy. So, until next time, au revoir.